Welcome back to another video. Today, I'm gonna to be doing another tutorial for you guys. I will be showing you a beginner's tutorial of Photoshop. In the past, I've done some Photoshop tutorials that you liked, and I've done some beginner Sony Vegas tutorials, but I've never really just given you a beginner's guide overall on Photoshop. So Photoshop might look scary, and when you open it, you'll probably see a screen somewhat like this. What you're going to want to do is you're just going to want to go into file, new, and then you're going to type in your dimensions. So this all depends on what you're making. Personally, right now, I'm going to be making the thumbnail for this video right here, and I'm just going to be walking you through the process of making this thumbnail, and I'm just going to point out everything that I'm doing. If you're watching this to make thumbnails, you will see it exactly in action and if you're just watching this to learn the things you'll learn all the points as we go and uh when i upload this i will mark it off into sections so you can learn what you want to learn so since i'm doing a thumbnail i'm going to make this 1920 by 1080 which is just the resolution of 1080p which is just standard high definition quality so i'm going to start by importing my image there is multiple ways to do this in my opinion the easiest way to import an image is to just drag it in all you got to do is drag it in and boom here's the image of me i'm going to be turning into a thumbnail or you can just click file open and find your file so i'm going to start by selecting myself photoshop has an easy option to select objects if you go to select subject and it will get a pretty good idea. I mean, that's that's pretty much me. For me, I have bigger hair, so it's a little harder. And then to clean up that selection, you're gonna wanna go over into your toolbar and click the quick select tool. If you click and drag, you can see it will select whatever you do. And if you do control on Z, you can undo it. When you wanna deselect as well, all you have to do is do the same thing, but hold alt and instead it will unselect it. And it does have a good way to get hair if you uh, have a situation like me. After you have done that selection, you can right click and you can click select and mask and then you just want to go on this tool right here and you pretty much just drag it around the edges and it will smooth it out a lot better so after you've got your selection as good as you can pretty much get it uh you right click and then you click layer via copy while having the select tool selected and then that will just make a different layer as you can see right here and you can just pretty much get rid of that one you can see not perfect, but doesn't really need to be. Now I'm gonna show you how to resize and reposition yourself and whatever object you are working with. All you have to do is just have your layer selected. You can click Control T. On the newer versions of Photoshop, all you have to do is drag, and just like that, you can see it will do it. But for me in this instance, I'm keeping that background with me and I'm just gonna blur it out and I'm gonna show you how to do that as well. So I'm gonna want to move them both at the same time. And to do that, all I have to do is hold control, select both of those layers, and then I can do control T again, do the same thing, but you can see both of these layers are being selected. So I can resize it however I want. This is gonna be a thumbnail and I already have a vision for it in my head which you guys will see come to life very soon. So I'm just gonna put it how I think it will look best. Like, that looks pretty good. And as you can see, I have that, and then me without the background, so it moved both layers. Now, if you wanna blur a background, whatever, there are uh, quite a few different ways you can do it, and uh, it really all depends on what type of look you're going for. I do recommend you mess around with it a little bit, but I'm gonna show you my favorite ways to do it. Just go up to the top, click filter, click blur, and uh, there's a bunch of different blurs here. My favorite are Gaussian blur and radial blur. Gaussian blur is just a regular blur, so you make the background nice and blurry. You know, what else can you ask for? Well, I'll show you, blur and then radial blur. I really like this one because it just gives it a more lively look. I'd say a good amount is about seven, and you can kind of see what that looks like. It just kind of, it's kind of some spin, you know, and it gives it some life. Now I'm going to show you how to add things called strokes, which are just outlines that you see. I'm not going to be using an outline for this one, but I'm going to show you how to do it. And then outer glows, inner glows, it's kind of the basic stuff just to help it like maybe mix with the background a little bit or just kind of get it to pop off whatever you're doing. You're going to want to go over to the layer double click the image and it's going to open up this screen right here. Here is the stroke. You can click that and mess with the settings 
See, my selection of the hair isn't perfect, so it's going to look terrible on this one. But all I have to do is put the stroke, and then you can see right here, it looks like what it's actually supposed to. You can make it white, you can do whatever, and that's how you do an outline. For me, since my selections are all over the place since my hair, and I don't like such like a bold look, I'm going to do a drop shadow which is kind of the same as an outer glow. When you mess around with the settings, they kind of both look the same, so. I'm probably gonna do it a white. I usually just test between two colors, white or black. Both look quite nice. Um, actually, no, I think I'm gonna roll with a black. And you can mess with the opacity, which is just a percentage. You can go up and down. So, I like to keep the distance. Like, I like to keep it pretty much just exactly next to it. I don't like to keep, like, it far away, whatever. The spread is pretty much just like what well, you can pretty much see. It just controls how defined the line is and how far it goes out. I put that down a pretty bit and then I just put size all the way up because it will kind of start to look like, uh, I mean more of like an outline if you don't get it like kind of dispersed. So I just like it to blend in with the background, but obviously still be there. And then what I'll usually do is I'll also add an inner shadow, whether it's like the color of the background. So say I was to add a blue one to make it match with that right there, or I could add black to make it go with a drop shadow, or I could do white as a contrast. I think I'll probably do a little bit of black, maybe a uh, blackish blue, a little bit of a dark blue. Next, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be adding the Photoshop logo onto the side just because I could do a bunch of text whatever i like to keep my thumbnails as clean as possible i think any work you should be doing just keep it as clean as possible it looks nice you don't need all that extra text you just want two one subject to focus on and just make them prominent and stick out and look nice so right here i have the photoshop logo and once again i can just double click to add effects to make it just uh stand in a little bit more so yeah i probably will add an outline on this one probably of like uh, a lighter blue just because that's usually how the Photoshop logo kind of looks and I can add a another drop shadow which could be black white I'll probably do it the same just to stop there from being too much contrast in this thumbnail and then at this point I'm gonna want to be just resizing everything make sure it is all like in the exact place that I want it because we're almost pretty much done at this point except for um, some color correction stuff which is also stuff you'll need to know so for my finishing touches I'm gonna want to go down here and click this button right here and right here I can do brightness and contrast I can do curves which means I can really mess with it you don't exactly need to know how to do those but it does help to get the exact look you want I always start by going and I just add some vibrance put up the vibrance saturation a bit as you can see looks a lot better i might actually since my face can start to look a little orange i might just vibe put a lot of vibrance on the background and then make a little another layer and then just put that under my face and then make one on top where i can just add a little bit more and then that will only affect my face and as you can see that looks a lot better so this is with vibrance and that's with none this looked normal 20 seconds ago but i bet it looks very dull now and then i'm not going to use any text for the thumbnail but i will show you how to do text because that is an important thing all you have to do is just click this button right here it's a text button and then you can click would you look at that you can type and you can do all those same effects to the text like the stroke the drop shadow but yeah this is the full process to one of my thumbnails and uh yeah it's not it's not as hard as it looks it's really just about being particular using the right images making sure it's high quality all in the right spaces and just being good at doing it you can make stuff pretty similar and then as you go on it will get a lot better i've been doing this for a while now and um this is still how i do it so anyways guys i hope this tutorial did help some people out if it did help you out please consider dropping a subscription and maybe dropping a like on this video as well anyways guys hopefully you all did enjoy and um hopefully i will catch you in my next video adios